So what I want to present is an ongoing work with uh, my collaborators. So we have, uh, this is with Pierre Colmes and Sally Gilles. Some parts are also uh, due to collaboration with uh, Gabriel Dospinescu. And what we, are, what we are interested in was periodic uh, ethyl cohomology, pro-ethyl cohomology, ethyl 2, but we, it's very difficult to access the ethyl cohomology. So pro-ethyl cohomology of analytic spaces, which kind of appear in the geometrizations uh, questions of uh, uh, periodic local long lines. And uh, so this particular project is about dualities. So some time ago, we did computations for uh, simple curves, Stein curves, and we realized that there is a both geometric, there is an indication that there is both geometric and arithmetic duality. And so then we, we started to, to prove it and the arithmetic duality turned out to be easier. Uh, so uh, we have a preliminary version now and I will explain why it's easier. And the geometric duality, which strategically is very simple in fact, and it should work in any dimension, we still have functional analytic problems there. So let me start. So I'm going to talk about arithmetic duality mostly. So I will assume K over QP is finite because we use some other characteristic type of computations. So finite extension, I have small residue field, small K and OK. And GK, fancy GK is going to be the Galois group of K. And C is going to be CP, so completion of the algebraic closure of, uh, of K. So arithmetic duality. So by which I mean it's an arithmetic duality over, it's a duality over K. So our main theorem. is the following, so X, so this is four curves. X is smooth, geometrically irreducible. And we work with dagger curves, but you can ignore it and just think about Stein or so partially proper curves. Dagger just means that we take a rigid analytic variety and over the structure sheet. So that allows us to do some local computations when homologies become finite. So uh, we can prove the following here, that there exists a natural race map and the uh, uh, map is taken in the category of solid QP vector spaces. And it goes from H4. So four comes from the fact that you have, I'm going to skip the protocol. So everything will be always protocol. So I skip the subscript. Uh, four comes from the fact that you have two, two geometric dimension and two coming from the arithmetic uh, from Galois group dimension. And here the twist is similar. One comes from the geometric and one from the arithmetic. And then uh, we have uh, the pairing between HI so this, uh, we are working in the solid category of vector spaces so these are solid products tensor products and we go to H4 and then by trace map to QP. So this pairing is perfect. Now I have to explain what I mean by that. So the way I'm going to state it now is not derived. So uh, I'm going to state it on individual cohomology theories. So we have pairings, uh, we have duality statements both ways actually. So we have a duality going from usual to compactly supported cohomology. Uh, 
and the dual here is home is the internal dual in the solid solid world with QP, but we also have the compactly supported version. So it goes from, uh, as I will explain later. So the usual direction you get it is, is this direction. Uh, and then you buy reflexibility. So we have to prove that the space is reflexive and then you can do the other direction. Okay, so this is the, the main statement. And in fact, uh, in this form, these categories, as I will tell, uh, explain in a moment, uh, uh, this the spaces we, we get here are extremely nice. So this can be actually seen in the classical functional analysis setup. So you don't have to, uh, you don't have to do the, in fact, this could have been stated in the, in the language of, of classical functional analysis. Okay, so now I'm going to make a lot of remarks, which will try to explain what are what the what are these objects which which appear here. So I will start with uh, the definition of compactly supported parietal cohomology. So I will just do the case of X is time when X is time, and this is in any dimension now. So any dimensions time is recall that we have strict inclusions of affinoids that exhaust exhaust x strict means that if you if you think in any other language that the compactification of un is inside un plus one and so these are affinoids and then compactly supported cohomology we define it in a naive way but this is the way, for example, the, uh, the definition of Chiarelato and others uh, for compactly supported DRAM cohomologies or coherent homologies go. So we take a mapping fiber into the from X cohomology of X to the cohomology of the boundary, and the cohomology of the boundary is by definition column over X. So in this case, it you can just subtract, remove the, the affinoids. And now, uh, so let me make a small remark here, is at least when dimension of X is one, then uh, we think that we convinced ourselves that this is the same as Huber's, um, yeah, okay, et al. cohomology of Huber with compact support of X. So recall that uh, Huber, has this, uh, Huber has this short paper in which he defines uh, P-adic or l uh, cohomology of viadic uh, spaces, right? At all cohomology. And, and we did computations with that cohomology with p coefficients in the case of period domains. And we have found out that uh, that what he defines as, as a talco homology is actually more, more suited, uh, should be actually uh, what we think should be pro talco homology. That is the, uh, the, the, the compactly supported, his compactly talco, uh, supported a talco homology is not in duality with a talco homology for, for period domains, for example. So the more, more naive kind of completed continuous cohomology in fact satisfies duality. And this one to, seems to us is actually uh, more like a compactly supported parietal cohomology. But so far, we're not able to prove this in any dimension. In dimension one, you can just do computations. So seems to be correct. Okay, second comment. So now I specialize when I'm in dimension one. So in dimension one, you have uh, three possibilities. X can be proper, can be dagger affinoid or it can be stein and now uh, a function from functional uh, analytic point of view this is what's happening here so if you have x proper then all the groups are finite so this is due to to Scholz. so they are finite rank over qp Okay, now uh, 
if it's uh, if x is time, then we prove that the usual cohomology is a nuclear fresh air. When I say nuclear, I mean the in the in the classical sense, uh, nuclear fresh air. So it's a it's a limit of of fresh airs, uh, for example, with uh, with compact uh, transition maps, and the compactly supported cohomology we prove is of compact type. So it's the opposite definition. You have an uh, inductive limit of of Banner spaces, for example, with compact transition maps, so compact type. So this is in the classical world, but it's not difficult to show that this, this kind of categories, nuclear fresh air and compact type space is actually embed, embedded in the, into the solid formalis very well. So uh, not only faithfully, but also the uh, exactness is preserved, or strict exactness is transferred to exactness. So actually you can pretend that you work you work inside that, and in fact, the product which is used in the solid world uh, is is then just equal to this uh, corresponds to this uh, strong product. Is sorry, pro, uh, dual which is used in the in the solid world is is corresponds to the strong dual in the classical world. So, so you can just pretend you are you are in the classical world for most of the computations. Now, just let me mention what happens when you are in a dagger. You have a dagger raffinoid. So this, these things got actually flipped because the arrows go the arrows go the other way. Okay, so that's the functional analysis. I will I will come back to to uh, to, to try to tell you why we had to use solid formalism actually. I mean for for young people they think it's uh, probably the thing to start with, but we didn't start with solid formalism. We started with the classical, we wrote everything in the classical formalism before, and that's what we started to, to work with here, but then we had to pass to solid for, for reasons that I will mention. So, okay, so the third point was, the again i'm in dimension one so uh but let me assume that we are partially proper that means we are stein or proper and then what we actually proved is a first proof is a derived uh, duality in the derived category will denote it that way of qp solid vector spaces. So I borrowed this notation from someone. And so if what we prove is that the derived cohomology is dual. Uh, sorry, so you have isomorphism between the quasi-isomorphism between uh, derived uh, cohomology and uh, uh, derived dual of uh, compactly supported cohomology. To get the numerology right here for okay so d is now d is now equal to r solid home okay so this is this is what we actually prove and we we need it because there is some kind of uh, uh, descent involved so uh, may be a Taurus argument involved so we we need something derived and uh, then we specialize so if we restrict to cohomology groups uh, we get we can use we can uh, so we actually get this statement which i wrote over there for cohomology groups by noticing that if you look at the x groups from compactly supported cohomology into QP, then these are zero in non-trivial degrees. And this is because this is quasi-compact, I mean, sorry, compact type. So compact type, so you can write it as a, as a limit uh, of, co-limit of uh, Smith spaces and Smith spaces, spaces are projective. So uh, you end up with just home here. And then we get the, statement for compactly supported cohomology using the fact that H1C is reflexive. 
so you can dualize in the in the naive naive way. Okay. No, thanks. Okay, so this is uh, some part of the remarks. More remarks coming. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so we are going to venture a conjecture. So this suggests what should happen. Our statement there, the derived statement suggests what should happen in general. So conjecture. I, I formulated this just for smooth and Stein varieties over K, geometrically reducible, uh, dimension D, and then we conjecture the following. So uh, first is that HI, the usual cohomology and the cohomology with compact support should has, have nice uh, functional analytic properties. So should be a nuclear pressure again. And um, a compact type. So I will mention in, in uh, later how how we compute that there are nuclear pressure and compact type, and um, and from this computation it would be clear that actually you can prove. Uh, so so this we know is true in any dimension. In fact, this first part, I don't know whether uh, I I don't know how to prove this compact type part. The reason is that if you take a limit of nuclear nuclear pressure, you still get nuclear space. So, and of course it's a pressure countable limit. So, so this is very simple. On the other hand, if you want to do the same thing with, with limits here, you still have to, uh, columns, you still have to control the arrows, the properties of the transition maps, and that's more, more difficult. Okay, two, so we have, Quasi-isomorphism. And uh, the way you expect, so we have QPJ, and then you have uh, this uh, internal solid uh, R-home from compactly supported cohomology. And then numerology here is D plus one minus J in the twist and here it's 2d plus 2. So d 2d plus 2, okay. Plus 2, okay. Good. And then h, this should again, for the same reason, coming from uh, point 0.1, this should actually descend down to naive uh, dualities. Once you know how these spaces behave. Okay, and H, I, C, X, the same way. Um, so it goes both ways. Okay. okay thanks. And uh, the next uh, remark, I did the borders in the wrong order. Uh, okay. So the next remark, I, I want to I want to uh, to give you an example, which started our computations. So we we actually didn't know what to expect. We didn't. In fact, we didn't think there is a duality. So we started to just compute. So uh, we started with X, which is an open unit disk. And you see the kind of spaces you get here. And in fact, you see what goes into, into the computation. So what you see is, for example, you have H1 of QP1. So we computed uh, this using periodic, uh, periodic comparison theorems. And then you get uh, OD 
And then there is a splitting. The splitting is non-canonical, but it's compatible with products. So I would just leave it as a, as a direct sum. H1, no, Galois, QP1. So that's what you get in degree one. And if you look at compactly supported cohomology, which you also compute from some comparison theorems, you get, if you have the comparison theorems, you get the O of the boundary of disk. So this is the ghost, ghost circle. I am writing it here because it's going to appear later on in, in direct computation. So get a ghost, ghost. In fact, in dimension one, all Poincare duality, all the duality I wrote reduces to duality for the ghost circle, which is of, in, for duality purposes, it has dimension one over two. It's kind of strange. And it's proper. So it behaves like a proper variety of dimension one over two. Okay, and then I have to model the functions on D, and then I get Galois group of QP. So this looks pretty good, right? Because uh, you see that there exists a duality here. Uh, yes. Ah, real dimension one. Okay. Maybe that's a good observation, yes. I didn't think about that. Complex dimension one over two, yes. One over two, yes. So, uh, so I will, I will stay. I will try to sketch for you the proof, and the proof basically reduces everything in dimension one to the to the boundary of the disk, and and then you come. It's a rubber ring, and then you you compute compute by hand. Okay, so let me uh, just mention that you see the duality here, right? So you see what's happening and why there should be duality. First of all, um, what you see is immediately Galois duality, right? Between the Galois groups and this adds up to four, just as you want it. And then you see coherent duality, so third duality. And this adds up also to four, so you think you are on a good way. I mean, <coughs> you 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 see that there is some hope. So here, uh, let me just write spell out the duality for Galois cohomology. And the coherent duality, so we use ser duality. I just mean ser duality when I say coherent duality. So I write it in the in the familiar ser ser form, but uh, in a moment I will specialize it to here. Okay, so this is ser duality, and why does it apply to this? Because we have isomorphisms that O D mod K is now equal isomorphic to H zero of differential forms and O of the boundary mod O D is the H1C of D. Okay, so we did these computations and we said, aha, maybe there is something here. Then we also did co computation for the open annulus, which was, which is a bit more involved because when you think about uh, 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 the comparison theorems, there is, there is, a, of course, things coming from the from the puncture, so which is the classical classical part which you have to deal with. Uh, okay, six, six. That's the last remark I have. So, solid versus classical function function, function analysis. And I think we announced this uh, result in January, Dober Wolf of January of last year. And it took us till now to write to to have a, a first version because uh, of the fight we have with uh, solid formalism, <laughs> or rather how to pass from classical to solid formalism mostly. But so uh, why did we have to use so had to use 
solid solid map because of two reasons. So one was that we need derived uh, duals. So these duals, which are denoted by this, and there are duals I found in, in the literature, they have duals for in the solid, in the, in the classical periodic functional analysis, but I couldn't make any of them work for our purposes. So I'm not sure uh, whether that was possible or not, but uh, I couldn't work it out. And then, and then what we need is uh, a topological Hochschild search spectral sequences. Um, how do you write Hochschild search spectral sequences? And I just didn't know uh, how to derive these uh, spectral sequences in the in the classical world. There was there was too much. Yeah, I mean, usually if, if you are in the very basic setup of uh, of locally convex. Uh, Topological vector spaces, you know, it's a quasi abelian category. You, you know, you can pass, you, you pass to the derived category. It's a derived category of, of the heart for, for, for some T structure. Uh, and that's abelian. So you kind of pretend you work in the abelian category consisting of some two, two objects. But, uh, but somehow uh, uh, this becomes, of course, much more involved because you have to go through several stages of these operations. And, I just I was just getting lost, and in the in the solid world it just it just works with no problems. So then so we pass to solid mathematics, and we suffered. Okay, so now I want to say something which is tell you about what happens in the geometrics in the geometric setup, and here in the geometric setup we don't have a proof. Uh, we have something is something like a proof in dimension one, but there is no reason why the strategy we have should not work in any dimension. So I'm just going to state the conjecture, some computation, and then verbally maybe tell you the strategy, which which uh, is blind to the dimension, in fact, and it has to work. But again, we cannot solve the functional analytic problem so far. Okay, so geometric duality. Okay, so what is the setup here? Where, uh, let me state the conjecture maybe right away. So um, conjecture. So now it's a Verdier duality. X move sign rigid analytic now over C and connected and dimension D. Okay, then we claim that there exists a natural isomorphism. Quasi isomorphism. Again, I'm in the in the solid world now all the time. So it is between X, QPJ, and R home in vector spaces VS. I am uh, I should say here ignoring because this is not what is going to be in the end. I'm so ignoring functional analysis. Vector spaces from R gamma C, X, Q, P. I'm going to add this one because then I, I have a map into, into Q, P one here. Uh, Q, P, Q, P one. Okay, so uh, this is what, what we think it should, should be happening. And the reason we think so is because of an example. Uh, so I'll give you a, a, an example, again, the simple example of the desk, uh, disk, but let me just mention what V is here. So, the, so these are vector spaces with capital V and capital S. So V shifts of Q, Q 
QP vector spaces. So that's a problem here. I don't, um, yeah, I mean, this, this will have to be modified this category, but let's, let's just pretend we are there. So on perfectoid spaces over, over C. Okay, so why, why do we believe this is true? So again, we did a bunch of computations for, for the curve. And let me give you an example. So X is again D, the unit disk. And what happens there? So open unit disk. So the only non-zero cohomology groups are the following. So we have H0, of course. I keep track of the twist uh, for conceptual reasons. And then we have H1, which is just OD, but now disk is, uh, the disk is over, over C. So OD uh, mod C twist. And then we have H2 compactly supported. Let me write this here. H2 compactly supported D QP. And then we get vector space, QP vector space. And then we get again O the boundary. So you get very similar objects as before. This is not surprising because if you, so basically you apply comparison theorems, I will sketch how this goes. You compute these kind of things and then you get the arithmetic, arithmetic one by Hoshil Ser. And then you, you have Tate's theorem, which tells you basically that uh, if you apply Galois cohomology to this kind of objects, then the, the, the C dies and you are left with the key, key, key structure of this, of this object. So that's why these two computations look very similar. So again, what we see here is, a, of course, QP vector space duality in some trivial way, but also you see the coherent duality, right? Again, the same objects. Coherent duality, only that now if you try to adapt the degrees, you get them wrong. So you get the first ones adapt to two, I think, and the coherent duality adds up to three, so no Poincaré duality. On this on this le level, and uh, the solution uh, it seems to be to to work so pass to the category of VS spaces, and in VS spaces you have X groups, and these X groups are going to contribute and explain why do we have verge duality in fact. So uh, let me just. So these are computations, mostly to Anschutz Lebra. So we have home in VS. I will be just interested with the target QP1 because that's the target we are using. So this is just QP1 and X VS QP, QP1 zero, so you have the usual situation, but then you have home VS uh, from the additive group. So additive group is the one which could see everywhere on, on the perfectoid spaces and uh, QP1. And now this is zero, but here we have a non-trivial extension in VS uh, <clears throat> and this comes, these extensions are generating Non-trivial extension here comes from the fundamental exact sequence. So you have uh, a sequence. Uh, let me write it this way, maybe. So we have B plus Chris as a as a VS space. Then we have a map to to G G A, and then we have Q P one. So this is a generating object for this C, C vector space. Okay. And all the X groups in the degrees higher than two vanish. So that's also computation of Anschutz-Lebra. 
And once you have this, you you see what's uh, happening with what did I lose here? What's happening with uh, with our computation for the disk? In fact. So I'm going to, to write down the Vergier duality for the disk. And then I will try to stay, I will stay the, I already stated the conjecture. So I will try to explain the strategy for, for proving something like that in words. Okay, so um, I get a, I get to write this. Um, Verdier duality for the disk now. Okay, so let me just finish with x i uh, is zero in the in Vs when i is not at least at least two. Okay, and then what we get from this computation. So again, I ignore topologic uh, topological issues. So this is kind of like a numerology type of computation. So we have H1 now D QP1, QPI is isomorphic to X1 in Vs, H2, T, D, and I run out of space for all the twists here. So this is two minus uh, J and I put one here. So you have this isomorphism. And for compactly supported, you will have you will have similar object here. So um, you have the same kind of object, only that here you have H uh, H one H one C appearing, and you also have H zero here. So home, sorry, home in V S from H zero. D QP to minus J QP one. Okay, QP one. H two, yes, sir. H two, yes. H two. Okay, so this was our starting computation. This and uh, uh, similar for Anulai to see to see that. Um, uh, that there is a chance for geometric duality, or the duality. So let me just mention the the, the strategy of, of proving something like that. So this uh, the duality on VS level seems a bit problem, uh, problematic. It seems easier to actually uh, go up, so to speak, and work on the Farquhar-Fontaine curve. And on the Farquhar-Fontaine curve, if you can work, uh, prove duality is going to be Poincaré duality, but kind of internal Poincaré duality. And how do we get to that Poincaré duality? Well, we take the complex representing proto cohomology. We twist, twist uh, the tail twist high enough. So now it's represented by syntomic cohomology. You tailor the syntomic cohomology to the curve. So you replace B crease by B, etc. And now you can see there's a complex of coherent shifts on the curve. So you have a complex of coherent shifts on the curve such that it's cohomology. In our case, of course, they are going to be quasi-coherent. That's the problem. Quasi-coherent shifts on the curve, whose cohomology computes now a proletal cohomology. And now you can do exactly the same for compactly supported. But now you notice that the complex, which represents syntomic cohomology, as usual, is built from uh, Hyodokato cohomology and the Deram piece of B Deram plus piece. So in fact, what it is 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 a complex associated to argama hyodokato on the on the curve um, and then modified in some derived way by feel feel r of uh, bideram argama bideram plus cohomology and and then it's clear that there is a, a duality so that, that the duality reduces to to the duality on the open patch outside of infinity and that just hyodokato duality which we know and and the, uh, and the filter to be the ramp plus duality at the stock at the generic at, at, at infinity and that we also know now the question is 
uh, what category of quasi coherent sheaf solid, of course, but still we need more than that. We need to work to pull it off. In the case of curves, the computation showed that in fact, you don't even have R homes, you just have really homes. So, and it should be true in general. Somehow the properties of this cohomology should allow you to, to, to pass from R home to really home. And these complexes are almost really like isomorphic in the case of, of, of curves anyway. So that's a strategy, but we couldn't pull it off in, in higher dimensions so far. Maybe, maybe something that comes from the, from the camp of Anschutz, Lebra, and Mann can help us with that, I don't know, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to do the, the part now, arithmetic part, which we can prove because functional analysis because it becomes much simpler. So how much time I have? I only have 15 minutes. 20 minutes, okay, so I don't have any time actually. Okay. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to tell you, but okay. Uh, so proof of this DRM1. Okay, so let me start with, with an example which is a trivial example, but uh, we just follow follow the strategy of this example. So X is proper, smooth, any dimension, D. So uh, how, how, uh, we get this how do we get arithmetic duality in this case? And an algebraic setup which is the same proof and it's something which was known for a long time. <clears throat> so first you prove geometric Poincare duality. And this, this we have here due to Zavialov man. Uh, so it says it's really Poincare duality. So we have we are over C and we have duality with twist one. Okay, then we use Hochschild set. So you are. You are. Then we use Hochschild set spectral sequence to this end. So we have E2, AB. So this uh, doesn't degenerate at E2, but it degenerates at E3. And uh, having that, and the Poincare duality, so this degenerates at E3. Then we can just look at the terms here. And on the terms, we can use now Galois duality coupled with the geometric duality. So Galois duality for in general. So V some uh, vector space of uh, representation of GK of finite rank. And we have duality. So that's the way the argument goes. So it's very simple. And we, in uh, the Stein case, we would like to mimic it. The main problem is, we, as, as I mentioned, we don't have uh, Verdi or Poincare duality on the geometric layer. So instead of using Poincare duality, we are going to use the comparison theorems which we have. And we are in the case of curves. So actually computations become very concrete and uh, what you get is uh, you you get uh, sequences. You get first you get a lot of vanishing. Then you get sequences which represent cohomology, which involve coherent part and non-coherent part, and this is what we use. Ah, sorry, because. I said it for any D, but I put 
I put it too, so. Would the Ah, uh, what? Sorry. Yes. Okay, so let's now uh, uh, do um, step first of the proof, which is um, geometric comparison theorems. So now the dimension D is one. So we are really in curves and let's let's say we are Stein. Stein curves, so geometric comparison theorems. So these are going to replace for us the duality on the geometric, geometric uh, level. Okay, so these results are due to earlier work with uh, Gabriel and also uh, some forthcoming work work with Achinger and with which we we actually study uh, comparison theorems for compactly supported cohomology. So first what we get is a lot of vanishing. So uh, we get that HI for curves, the geometric one, is zero unless so outside of degree zero one and the compactly supported one also vanishes outside but now degrees one and two so you have a lot of vanishing then you have isomorphism so you can compute this non vanishing uh, guys some some you can really compute for some you get a long exact sequence so for computations we have of course h0 but we also have h1 so h1 with compact support or not of qp1 this is uh, at least for, for conceptual reason again this twist is uh, what we call hedokata part with twist one. So let me explain what is this, this term here. So this term, so Hyodokato, index J compactly supported or not, is uh, defined as H I Hyodokato. So uh, what is Hyodokato? You can just think of Hyodokato as being the RAM. It's a, it's a refined DRAM structure, so it's defined for this purpose. I can pretend that I can just take uh, the one defined over f f f breve, so the v vectors of the uh, algebraic closure of the residue field, and also maybe to simplify functional analysis, I take the Banach form of BST, and then uh, we take pi equal one and n equals zero part. So this, this is a fine structure, a breve structure underlying the Ramco homology, but it has a Frobenius because it's defined using models. It has a Frobenius and monodromies. So this one is a period ring. It also has all these structures. There is also some uh, Galois action, but never mind that one. Yes. Thanks. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, so let me just mention that if, which is something which we use all the time, if it happens that it's Hyodokato cohomology uh, of XC is finite, and if you work in Dagger words, you, this is true for affinoids, but even if you just uh, uh, work in the word, uh, I mean, instead of affinoid, you can restrict to something like a, uh, naive interior of an affinoid and then you get this so it's which is Stein so you get this these objects finite and then this 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 guy here is a BC so it's a banacolme space or more formally C points of banacolme space so we think of this as C plus minus QP vector space to some degrees so some rank and then what happens in computations of Galois homology is that these this guys will tend to disappear, this complex part, com, uh, this C, C part. So you are left, that's where, so 
bottom line, that's where the Galois cohomology is going to come from. It's going to come from this kind of BC spaces. Okay, so that's what, what was that? That was H1, okay. So uh, I am left with two more, which are a bit more complicated. So they involved um, what we called uh, in the work with Gabriel, uh, fundamental exact sequences for, for these groups. So for usual protocol homology group, you get fundamental exact sequence that we, we used a lot before, but for compactly supported cohomology, you actually don't get it. But still in these lower degrees, you get something which is not too bad. And in particular, it gives you the trace map. Okay, so let me let me just state what we get in degrees in over degrees, so we get exact sequences. So all of this is still in the geometric setup. So for H1, UP1, uh, there's something wrong there, no? Uh, there shouldn't be a star, the star should be compact support. <clears throat> because for the usual one, we get H Hyodokato XC1 here, but there is, there is a term coming from the left, which is OXC over C. So this is a sequence which we used before in many computations, but you have something similar for compactly supported cohomology. And here you have QP. We sit by one. And here you are going to have uh, H1 of a Deram term. And here you have uh, H1 uh, T X T two something maybe uh, Hyodokato, sorry. Hyodokato one uh, with twist two. Okay, so this kind of sequences come from comparison theorems. So this this one comes from this type of Hyodokata with compact support. And then you use the Hyodokata trace map, which is the same as the, which comes from the RAM trace map. And it gives you this kind of isomorphism. So this is our geometric trace, in fact. And uh, this arrow, so, uh, so there is, it's not an isomorphism in general, right? So uh, these two sequences come from the same type of comparison theorems. It's just that this term can be identified as a quotient of this type of terms for compactly supported. And so we get something like that, but this one is not going to simplify. So we stayed with something like that. We have geometric trace and now arithmetic trace. It's just the descent of, uh, of this trace. So we have trace X, is H four C is isomorphic to H two Galois H two C X C Q P two and now this goes by trace to Q two H two Galois of Q P one. So the trace is twisted. And uh, now this by trace K goes to QP. So that's the arithmetic trace. And now the arithmetic trace is an isomorphism. Okay, and next step in the proof is Galois descent. So you have to descend from uh, these geometric computations to, to the arithmetic setup. So uh, we do it using the spectral sequence, or should we say spectral sequence. So we have H I Galois, H J star maybe here, X C Q P S, 
and thus computes cohomology of QPS. Okay, so now our goal was to compute these terms here. So what are these terms? We can use the geometric comparison theorems to, to compute these Galois terms. And when you do that, so you need, need, need this Galois cohomology. So it's a Galois cohomology of what terms? So if you look at these sequences, what do we get? I should say what this guy here is actually. So this guy is very explicit. Let me write this. So dr compactly supported xci is h1 compactly supported x ox tensor bideram plus mod fi. So this is compactly supported cohomology. And then h1 t x omega 1 and then here we get b the ram plus mod f i minus one and that's it because uh, you don't have any other cohomologies and this all should be twisted shifted uh, by minus uh, minus one so if you look at the terms which appear in these sequences what do you see uh, for, for this guy? You see that you need Galois cohomology of the following objects, H0, X, Omega, product with C, and there is some twist. Then H1 compactly supported, which comes from here, uh, compactly supported uh, of O, I think. Yeah, okay, of O. Um, tensor C, and then you get uh, H, this here, the Kato term, which you have to treat. Twisted by S. So what is the Galois homology of that? Well, we have uh, uh, Tate's DRM, which generalizes to this setup. So these spaces are reasonably nice, but uh, in fact, maybe you don't even need that, which tells us that if you apply Galois cohomology of that, and let's assume this this uh, guy here, the Hyodokato is finite, then you end up actually just with this term, with this term, and with uh, uh, Galois cohomology of finite rank vector space. So let me write this. So uh, we apply um, so end up so if you apply h i Galois to all these terms above, we end up with h zero omega and then h one with compact support, and then something like h one x uh, no Galois of v. Assuming Hyodokato is finite. So if you assume that you end up with this kind of spaces inside the spectral sequence. So then, okay, you think you are basically done. You see what's happening, right? So the first thing you see that uh, uh, assuming uh, a tall pro product is compatible with coherent product plus and Galois product. You can, uh, you can prove products uh, uh, dualities for the terms of the spectral sequence and then, and then descend uh, upgrade to the, to the abatmo. Ab 
So this is what we call, uh, uh, to prove that uh, this is what we call a reciprocity, reciprocity law argument. We don't prove it for general X. It's too, it was too difficult for us. We prove it for, uh, for the boundary. So we reduce it to the boundary of the disk. And for the boundary of the disk, we can do explicit computations using phi gamma modules and symptomic methods. So that part. But even, if, uh, even uh, before, before doing that, you, you can see immediately that modulo, modulo extension issues, which you have to solve from this spectral sequence. Now you see why, why H, uh, I, proetal, proetal is nuclear fresh air, right? It is nuclear fresh air because the spaces that you see appearing are like these spaces. So it's because what you get is something like H zero X omegas appearing and these are nuclear fresh air modulus some finite vector spaces which you, which, you, which you can control. And why the other one is compact type. And again, you, you see it, you see it from, from these computations, it's because this one is of compact type. That's why you get these compact type computations. Okay, so I, I don't have time at all to explain this, but the rest of the argument is of is is trying to to prove this this part of of, of the thing, which which is more difficult than I I think than it should be. So we reduce it to the to the boundary of the disk by a series of reductions. Thank you.